okay. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying in the discords, we're going to change tempo a bit this week, uh, just because I've been working on the app and it's a bit, uh, the progress is a bit slower, uh, with less interesting stuff to show off, uh, week on week, like before, like I know data science and ocean quite well. So it was quite easy to like have a notebook ready and all this sort of stuff. But, uh, now that's, um, we're kind of in the planning stages of what the app might look like. It, it's just not as interesting to present to people in the hacking sessions or even for me to like code on uh, in the hacking sessions. So I will pr probably give a quick update on the app and stuff, but uh, I was chatting to Keaton earlier on and he was saying he was working with the DAO frameworks and stuff. And a while back, I was thinking it would be really interesting to, to actually have a hacking session where, you know, maybe we spin up a DAO and add people as members, like put it on the test net. Um, so maybe we'll do that today or maybe we'll do that in the next session or something like that. But I think it would be really interesting for everyone um, to see what a DAO framework looks like, how you can launch a DAO, add people, um, like what even is a DAO anyway? Uh, like, you know, with the shared treasuries and the votes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm definitely interested because I haven't seen the Aragon framework before. So uh, yeah, I'm keen to see what Keaton has to show us now. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of context about the DAOs that we'll be looking at now. So I figured we would take a look at a couple DAOs that I've already spun up there on Rigby at the moment. Um, and we can absolutely go through summoning a new DAO uh, at the moment, though I did just kind of want to show what, what it would look like because, you know, some people are familiar with DAOs, but I think like overall, as we're re-examining what does it mean to work for an organization, uh, it can be helpful just to sort of take a look and and see, see what it, what's it feel like? What's it look like to interact with these DAOs and how does the framework uh, function? So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here if that's okay with y'all. Oops, I think it needs to be enabled real quick. Yeah, there you go. Cool, thank you. Um, uh, okay, let me know if y'all can see this. Uh, I'm on an ultra wide here, so sometimes some details can be difficult to see. Um, but we're just gonna take a look real quick at like what's it look like from the user end to use a DAO, and then I'll look at real briefly some CLI tools, which are super important for this particular DAO framework we're looking at. But again, just to like conceptualize what we're thinking about in a DAO here, a DAO is just a way to facilitate coordination, manage resources, and vote on various proposals that an organization might be undertaking. So in this instance, uh, as we're looking at this in the context of the generative art algorithm, what we'd like to do is spin up a DAO that is specifically managing the, uh, the algorithm itself. So what I'll do first here is just take a real quick tour through the Aragon UI. Uh, we'll glance at some CLI tools that are used to sort of configure things. And then we'll talk about a little bit how we would see the proposed value flow working into a DAO like this. So uh, what we're looking at here, like I said, is let me just check the chat. Cool. Uh, what, I, what we're looking at here is the, the UI. So when you go to the Aragon client, uh, you will connect your wallet. I'll just actually do that from scratch here. Uh, you'd connect your wallet like you would with any Web3 interface. I'm on Ring to be here. But connecting your wallet, like we've talked about for those who are a little bit newer to Web3, is, is sort of your identity. This is how you show like, okay, I have the authority to propose votes in the DAO. Uh, I have the authority to vote on things within the DAO. So connecting your wallet is just going to be how you get access to the DAO. Within the Aragon framework, Aragon breaks down several key pieces of functionality to sort of abstract away the complexity of working within a DAO. Um, the out of the box tools that Aragon comes with, which again, just for context, Aragon is a DAO framework, um, are things like token management. So adding new folks to the DAO by minting new tokens and distributing them. We'll go through an example of that in a second. Uh, Aragon DAO also provides voting mechanisms right out of the box. So you know, this can be used in conjunction with something like Snapshot, or we can just propose votes directly within the DAO. One thing to note is that out of the box, uh, these are all a bunch of test votes you can see I've done recently. Um, one thing to note out of the box, and you'll see this little disclaimer here, is votes are used for signaling out of the box. Um, they won't trigger any treasury actions automatically. This is something we can configure. One other thing, just like as we're going through this to keep in mind, is that Aragon, uh, let me see if I can bring up the code base. There is a lot of source code on the Aragon GitHub. So there is a lot of opportunity to play around and to dig around with some new functionality. Uh, but again, I'm just kind of going through like what comes out of the box here. So again, built-in voting, built-in identity management and token management. Again, we'll, we'll look at examples of all these in a second. Um, we also have finance, which again is just, you know, potentially something for more of like the core team to manage. This is like sending funds to the DAO. 
withdrawing tokens out of the DAO. Uh, as you can see, I have a teeny amount in here I've been playing with. And then there's also a really interesting feature that we're not entirely sure how we're going to use yet, but there's this concept of an agent within the DAO, which is technically a smart contract that can interact with certain other smart contracts on behalf of the DAO. Um, there are some technical problems that we're still working on solving, which I'll, I'll give a brief synopsis of at the end. But for example, one of the technical problems we're solving right now is how to publish to Ocean as the DAO. So the DAO treasury is where the value from the algorithm flows back. So that's still a problem we're trying to solve, which we'll take a look at. But I uh, just wanted to highlight this, which is, again, a functionality within the DAO framework, which allows the DAO itself to interact with smart contracts. Uh, I'm actually working with the folks at Aragon right now to sort of tease out some more functionality there. But so like, okay, we just looked at all these apps. What does that mean for me as someone who worked on this algorithm, who has own, who will have ownership of the algorithm? Like, how do I interact? How do I get involved? So um, that's a quick, first of all, any quick questions about the framework itself before I talk a little bit more about value flow and then work through some examples here. Cool. If questions do come up, uh, pop them in the chat or DM me later. Always happy to uh, talk about that. So. Again, that's a real basic breakdown of what the Aragon DAO is. As you can see, the point is, is it provides us the functionality to facilitate these types of coordination with the decentralized market economy, or data economy, rather. So uh, things like, OK, how do we get involved? But what does it look like to be added into this DAO, right? So let's say right now, these are the two folks who are uh, involved in the DAO. This is their token balance. Oh, one other thing to note is when we summon a DAO, uh, there also gets generated a DAO token, which is ERC20. Uh, it is transferable and it represents ownership of the DAO. Um, there's also another technical problem we're working on solving related to that. I'll talk about that in a moment. But so let's say like, okay, uh, we want to add, uh, we want to add Jakub here because he, he's been working on this and we want to make sure he's got ownership of the DAO. How do we do that? So first, actually, real quick, let me grab one of my test accounts. Uh, okay. So let's say that as a community, we want to look at adding this person to the DAO. So let's say this is Jakub's address. This is just one of my test accounts. Um, but let's say we want to add him. And also the, the tokens are, the token numbers are arbitrary right now. They won't be for the actual generative art release. I'll talk about that in a moment as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add these tokens. Um, and you'll notice, I'll get a permission note here, that I actually can't just mint tokens and add someone. What this will do when I sign this transaction as a member of the DAO is it'll actually generate a vote. So basically it's gonna ask the community, are we sure we wanna bring this person in? Are we sure we wanna give them these tokens? So uh, again, I just signed a transaction requesting to add 50 tokens to that address. So what will eventually happen is if you go to the voting app, there will come this, which is an open vote you'll see here. Um, and then you can interact with the vote just like this. So again, you, you'll vote based on your ownership in the DAO, which is represented by the number of DAO tokens you have. So in this account that I am right now, uh, I believe I have 100 of tokens, 100 uh, DAO tokens. So doing this, what I'm doing right here, uh, again, if I'm going too quick, let me know. But basically, I'm, I'm voting yes on this proposal, which is to add this new person to the DAO. So I'm going to create that transaction. And I think since this account I'm using right now, has a majority of the tokens, I think this should just pass the vote because I have like 90% of the token supply. Um, so what happens, so again, so that's like the real basic framework, like I want to add someone to the DAO, I don't want to give them tokens. What does that mean, right? Basically the community has to come together and agree on that. Now we can configure this in terms, so we can see the vote just passed, right? Because I, the account I voted with owned 91% of the tokens. And all we needed to pass this vote was 50% support. So my one vote holding 91% of the tokens passed, right? Ideally, when, when this comes to the community, everyone will have an equal amount of tokens, at least for the generative art DAO. So uh, this is really just an example to quickly pass a vote. But, but as you can see here, again, how many tokens you have, I'll go test in this case, represents your ownership of the DAO, which then translates to voting power. So again, that's, transfer, that's you know, adding someone to the DAO and giving them tokens. So now if I go back here, you'll see this new person, which in our example was Yakub, has been added with a balance of 50 tokens. Okay, so not only did I mint an additional 50 tokens here, but I also brought someone else new into the DAO. Um, we can also do things like transfer tokens. Again, they are transferable. So um, we, can use, uh, we can use the finance app to actually move tokens around and the tokens app here to actually mint new tokens and add new people into the fold. 
Um, so that's all well and good. That sounds great. How does this translate to our work with Ocean? What does this mean for publishing algorithms on, on the marketplace? Like how does the value flow? So uh, what we would envision doing for the generative art DAO is like I mentioned, we would add every person who contributed to the project to the DAO and they would each get one DAO token, meaning essentially that each person who worked on the project, just again, as we're piloting this and testing out our, our framework here, they would have equal ownership in the DAO itself. That means that each person also has equal ownership to claim on the treasury. Now the DAO treasury will, uh, I, in an ideal state, what we're thinking right now is consisting of two tokens, which would be the tokens from the algorithm publishing itself, the actual data token, as well as the liquidity pool token. So what we would see as like an ideal state for value flow, as far as like a DAO publishing an algorithm value flow back and then the creators of the algorithm, the participants of the DAO actually getting value is this. So uh, one, the data tokens themselves in the algorithm would theoretically increase in value as the algorithm gets used. Second, what we know about, and jump, feel free to jump in if I'm uh, incorrectly explaining the ocean mechanics here, Richard. Um, but as far as the algorithm being used, transaction fees get paid back to the token for the liquidity pool token holders. So what we'd see for the DAO is that the DAO treasury owns the data tokens as well as the liquidity pool tokens for the algorithm. Um, and then what we'd see as an ideal end state is what would happen automatically is as the algorithm gets used, transaction fees get paid back to the DAO. And then in an ideal state, we're not quite there yet, but in an ideal state from that point, as the DAO accumulates transaction fees from usage of the algorithm, we would do something maybe like streaming payments or drip payments uh, in proportion to your ownership of the DAO that would happen automatically. So at the end of the day, what we would love to see is automatic value flow from algorithm gets used, transaction fees get paid to the publisher of the algorithm, which in our end state will be the DAO, and then those transaction fees then get dispersed to the participants of the DAO. Now, again, there are several problems on the technical side we need to solve here. Um, number one is ensuring we actually can publish from the DAO to the Ocean Marketplace. I'm actually still digging into the uh, signatures and the smart contracts required to actually publish on Ocean. Um, one thing to note is that, again, this, the idea is this for, to be a decentralized and democratic governance system here. So anytime the DAO is taking an action, uh, like publishing a data set, what might happen is that particip participants of the DAO may have to vote to approve that action. And so right now we're kind of trying to figure out how do we submit a vote to the DAO on behalf of, or submit a vote to the DAO as the DAO is looking to publish, and then also make sure we can confirm that vote, send the transaction through to actually publish on the marketplace. So again, that's a technical problem we haven't solved yet. Um, my gut says there's a, there's a solution here, we just need to find it. Okay. But Just to clarify, because there is, when you publish a data token, you might remember from the first YouTube video, but you have to confirm several transactions, right? And so if you, if you use the agent, so the agent is where someone can act on behalf of the DAO, and then it goes to a vote after that. But the issue is that by the time everyone votes on the first confirmed transaction, it will have timed out in the ocean marketplace. There's like a timeout, but if you take too long to confirm different transactions when you're publishing a data set, it times out and you have to start over again. And so if it was possible to publish on the ocean marketplace with a single transaction, I think we would be able to do that through Argon. But the issue is that we have to confirm several transactions and there's, there's a timeout. So this is the technical issue. You're muted, Keaton. Yeah, sorry. Um, so we can actually take a look at like the problem I'm running into because uh, I, was, I was just testing this here. So I'll show you what we mean by uh, transactions generating a vote and the fact that Meta, or that Ocean requires two transactions. So, okay, two, five, two, five, okay. So it should be good here. So again, this is just like test data set. As you can see, I'm on, uh, I'm on Rinkby here. Um, you'll see me using this frame wallet. Don't, it's not super important, it's just, uh, a wallet with native wallet with native support for Aragon, so it's, it's supposed to be the same thing as MetaMask, but it is what it is. Um, so let's see. Oh, actually, may have broken this. Let's see if I broke it. Uh, I did actually break it. Okay. Um, let me try. Maybe I don't want to do this live, but okay. Yeah. So I'll show you. So real quick, um, what we mean by two transactions. So if I do this, this should work. Um, so yeah, you know, this is where we're publishing to, uh, don't need to be connected. Hmm. 
Yeah, I apologize. I was actually just doing some things that made this fail quicker than usual. But basically, uh, yeah, we'll just go. We'll just go here. So I'll demonstrate what we mean by multiple transactions. But yeah, this is MetaMask, so this this will actually go through. Um, But yeah, so that's, you know, as you can see, there are tools here, right? Like there, people have thought about this problem of how do I publish as a DAO? Um, and to be, to be fair, this Aragon agent feature, which we're thinking of using, uh, is very new. And like, that's kind of one of the things with the entire ecosystem is like all the tools are very new. So we're, everyone's still kind of trying to figure things out here. So, okay, so I just tried to publish the data set. Boom, I had the first transaction, right? It's doing some stuff, it's doing the stuff. It will then request a second transaction. So if we were to publish this on behalf of the DAO, what that first transaction would have done that I just did is it would have generated a vote here. And the vote would say like, hey, and so here we can see the second transaction pop up. So if I would have done that, and then this will actually publish the data set now. Um, but if I would have done that through the DAO, that first transaction that came up would have generated a vote. Basically, the DAO would have to say, hey, can we approve the DAO to sign this first transaction? And so in that time when it was waiting between signing that first transaction and generating the second transaction, uh, this upload method here actually fails. So that's a technical problem we're looking to solve um, at the there's moment. A, there's a question here from Holly saying, could we have like a transaction signing meeting where signing happens in a really quick time frame? Like what is the timeout? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so I'm still working with the Aragon folks. And so obviously this worked because um, it was their MetaMask. But yeah, so that's in terms of solving this problem, Holly, we're thinking of something along those lines. Um, authorization vote. Yeah, exactly. So so the, the workarounds are something like that. When we're thinking of how do we solve this problem, one of the things I'm thinking about is like, how do we make sure like trust isn't creeping into the equation in ways we don't want it to, right? Like ideally, so I mean, there is a workaround for this and that's, you know, nominate a trusted member of the DAO to publish the algorithm, which is is not ideal, obviously. That's one of the pieces we want to remove the trust element from. But yeah, in terms of solving this, we're thinking of something like rolling up multiple transactions into one and then sending that roll up to the DAO for a vote. Um, in terms of like it being a, a timing issue, Holly, is like, should we just like have a really quick vote? Um, one thing to also note is like, you know, at the end of the day, the Aragon DAO is a DAP and it is pulling from signatures on chain. And like, we have to wait for those to propagate. And sometimes like by the time the, the agent call to the smart contract actually generates a vote in the DAO, like just because waiting for it to propagate the cross chain, like even that will be too much for the ocean upload to fail. So I don't know if like a really quick uh, acceptance of the vote would work. I think it's, I think it might be, I think the, the smart contracts on the ocean side might have issues with the way agent is signing those transactions. So again, I, I'm not 100% certain on that. It's still a problem we're working on. But um, Rish, yeah, it might be something along the lines of what you mentioned. Like I've, I've played around a lot with permissions. Like can we just let the, I've, I've done things like give the agent permission to do everything and everything on the DAO without a vote. Um, and I, you run into different problems there. So again, technical problems to solve here. What I, what I was hoping to do in this particular session was like just, real quickly expose folks to like, what, what is working within this DAO going to look like? How are folks going to get rewarded? You know, can I like log in and see my tokens? You know, the answer is like, yes, you can connect your wallet and see, and, you know, they'll tell you this is you and you'll see the, the tokens. This represents uh, DAO tokens. Again, DAO tokens, we would, we would look to have represent a share of ownership on the treasury. The treasury would contain the actual assets generated from the publishing of the algorithm. So, uh, again, there are definitely still um, some problems. Sorry, can I, uh, can I say something, uh, ask something? Um, yeah, of course. So you, you mentioned there are two types of tokens, right? So one was the DAO token, which is the uh, treasury token. And then there's some other token too, right? Did you say that? I can, do you want me to get that one? Yeah, so, so basically, yeah, there's the liquidity pool tokens. And so like, if you think of this from a currency point of view, when we create a data token, we are creating a new currency. We are minting uh, coins, right? And so now that the coins are minted, how do we, how do we buy those coins? Uh, we need some sort of uh, exchange and we do that using a liquidity pool. So you, like banks do this exchange, but like in Web3, we want to do like a, a decentralized exchange that isn't, doesn't have a middleman. And so people use these liquidity pools is what they're called. And it's where 
it like so you have a pool and let's say we have we, we want to swap into the data token from our ocean token and so what we need is a pool that has lots of ocean tokens and lots of data tokens and so in the traditional way a bank would just you know ha provide a, enough of both of those tokens but how it happens in a decentralized way is lots of people uh, contribute like some ocean tokens some data tokens and then whenever someone wants to buy this data token they they buy it from the liquidity pool basically and so we need to reward people for uh for you know providing liquidity between ocean and this data token and so that happens through uh, uh through like transaction fees um and so people people can decide to what's called stake on this liquidity pool and when you stake on the liquidity pool every time a, a swap happens you get uh some of the fees basically and so the first token is the ocean token or sorry the data token and then we also have tokens to represent shares of the liquidity pool and so when you publish a data set on the ocean marketplace it mints however many data tokens you want and it also creates a hundred uh, balancer pool or so pool tokens basically and so that's like if you own 100 pool tokens, you own 100% of the pool and you get 100% of the transaction fees and so on. Um, it's actually not fixed to 100, so you can have more than 100, but that's just what is minted at the start. So you could have 110 pool tokens and it would just be split proportionally. But so like, if you want to invest in data sets, there's two ways that you can do this. The first one is to, to buy the data token itself in the expectation that it will increase in value in future, because you know if it's a good data set, uh, it's going to be worth more. And, uh, and so that's, that's the first way. But if you just buy the token, you don't get any transactions fees every time it's consumed. The other option is to only buy pool tokens and not buy the data token itself. And in that case, you will get transaction fees, but you won't, you won't, uh, you won't be up if the price of the token increases. So you're not exposed to token increases. And so there's actually a really good course on this, like oceanacademy.io. Um, and it's called like data, data DeFi, I think is the second, uh, the second course in Ocean Academy. And it, it gives a really, it does a really good job of introducing to beginners, like how, what the difference between these two things is. I think you you did a great job too explaining. So okay, I think great. I'm starting to understand. But then the DAO will own the data tokens, right? Like to, like are divided between the DAO, right? Is that right? Okay. The DAO, the, yeah, the DAO will like custody the data tokens or the algorithm tokens. Um, right. right. But we but we would envision owning the DAO tokens themselves as being a claim on that treasury. So although the DAO, like Richard said, would, would be the custodian of those, right? Like it would be stored within the DAO ownership of the, the DAO tokens themselves, which we can see represented um, here in this column once this loads, that would be a claim on the treasury. So all that, so like what's in your wallet as a user are DAO tokens. However, those DAO tokens relate to a claim on the treasury, which holds both those tokens that Richard was talking about. Okay, that's pretty, like jumping through holes. I and, think um, yeah, it makes so sense. Okay, and kind so of makes sense. Grace, yeah. So, so we're planning on, like everyone will split equally the algorithm tokens themselves and will split equally the balancer tokens, the, the pool tokens between all of the contributors. And so hopefully, hopefully you get like um, something like, uh, you know, your capital increases. So the ownership, the, 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 how much your tokens are worth will increase. And you'll also get some sort of like dividends. So ideally you'll get some dividends from the pool tokens plus what you own will increase in value. And so it's something like, you know, the share price increasing and also getting dividends because that's nice. It's nice to get some sort of passive income while also like owning something that's increasing in value. And so hopefully we can have both of those aspects. Totally. And, and again, so while we aren't at end state yet, for, because there's, you know, one thing maybe just to be transparent here is there in order to achieve this like ideal end state where everything's super automated, specifically like stream payments based on transaction fees for liquidity pool holders. Um, it's very possible. We're going to have to build some custom solutions to this stuff, which again is, is an opportunity in itself, right? Like we're going to be building tools that don't exist and that might provide a lot of value outside our own ecosystem. Um, but that is to say like, this is definitely something that, 
like I, I would love folks' opinion on, right? Especially like, you know, as I'm explaining this, uh, if folks, if something's not sitting right, if you think there's a better way to do something, uh, I, I definitely want to hear about it. Again, this is something that is, is like a project I'm working on, but for sure, I would welcome community feedback in this. Like, I, I, don't, I don't want this to be something where I'm telling y'all, hey, this is how it's going to work, right? Um, there is going to need to be a little bit of direction from us, but to the extent that we can accommodate outside feedback, like would love folks' opinions on this uh, and also uh, any questions y'all may have. So yeah, hopefully this makes sense for now. Um, any, oh, the CLI tool. Uh, so basically the Aragon CLI sorry. is... Sorry, Keaton. Rich, did you have another question there? Are you on mute as... Oh, no, no, no. Thanks. Oh, okay. Thanks for explanation, both of you. So, yeah. No problem. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess like this isn't super important to like end users, but just one thing to know about the Aragon DAO is there's a lot of functionality in terms of customization that isn't available through the UI. Um, so this, this is just something to keep in mind as like squads start to form and DAO involvement starts to get a little more heavy. Uh, I'm always happy to do like a walkthrough of the CLI tool. I mean, if you're, if you're comfortable in the command line, it's not going to be anything super new. Um, also, if you're on a Mac with an M1 chip, I ran into very specific troubleshooting issues. And I'm happy to talk through those as well. So uh, let me know if anything comes up along those lines. But yeah, the long and short of it is that's what we're looking at for the DAO framework. Um, again, I'm super excited to start building out some custom functionality, getting some value flowing. But yeah, this is a community effort. So I hope, I hope folks are excited. Like we're actually getting to the point where we're going to start like giving people ownership of something that we built together. And it's going to be, I think at the moment we're thinking Polygon. Uh, as far as a, a main net launch, obviously this is on Ring to be at the moment, but yeah, I hope y'all are excited. Like we're really getting close to the point where, Hey, you like you built something as a decentralized community and now it's a thing on a main net that you actually call well, an L2, but it's a fungible thing that you can actually own. So I'm super excited about it. Uh, we're making some really good progress here. And yeah, like I said, let me know any and all questions. Always happy to chat. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think it's like, it's going to be a really hard problem as well, right? Because essentially what we're trying to solve is like a UBI based on value generated by AI. And so, yeah, I think it's going to take a long time to figure out what's a good way to distribute this. Um, and like even, so one of the other things we're working on is uh, with Jakob is we want to simulate, uh, like we want to, we want to simulate the value uh, distribution uh, based on different parameters and stuff like that. And there's a framework you can do that in called Token Spice, which is a token engineering framework. And so what we can do is we can create these DAOs and we can have a certain number of members in the DAO and we can change you know, how we distribute value ba based on when the algorithm is consumed. And then we can see like what the, what the balance of each member in the DAO is with, with all of these different parameters. And so, we're just we're starting those in parallel as well, and hopefully they can inform what we do with uh, the DAO itself. Um, yeah, and then like I guess Keaton, like because we were thinking about other frameworks as well, right? And like one of them was DAO House. Um, yeah. Like, so yeah, there are some other frameworks. Um, other frameworks like so. One of the reasons we settled on Aragon is it, it's really good for sort of the entry-level DAO experience. The UI is really clean. The functionality out of the box sort of provides the basics. Um, there are other DAO frameworks, like Richard just mentioned, DAO House, that might have a bit more in terms of functionality, um, but it might be a little more difficult to navigate a learning curve on. So just real quick, I'll talk about something that I really like with DAO House that is, is unique to DAO House. So DAO House is built on the Moloch DAO framework. Um, DAO House has some really interesting ideas for how to handle voting. So that's like, you know, one thing that we'll, we'll, we'll run into as we get into a DAO is selecting things like what's the quorum we need for a vote? Like what percentage of outstanding tokens need to be present in a vote in order for it to go forward? Um, DAO House has a function called holographic voting, which I definitely recommend uh, Googling it and reading up on some papers because it, it gets complicated kind of quickly. But the... Um, the, the long and short of it is, is basically holographic voting allows for people to actually stake on proposals um, and essentially bet on the success or failure of a proposal. And for example, the more bets for the passing of a proposal that exists, 
the lower the quorum needs. To, I mean, are we all familiar? I come from political background. Are we all familiar with the term quorum? Just like the percentage of out, percentage of out, the percentage of the total community that needs to be present for a vote. Um, so basically, if there's a proposal that people are staking on to pass, the greater the stake for a passed proposal, the smaller the quorum amount is. Basically, meaning that like people are only going to stake on proposals that they think have a higher chance to pass. So if the community thinks the proposal has a higher chance to pass, the quorum required for that vote actually shrinks. So that's um, that's what's called holographic voting. Again, I, I haven't ever used a holographic voting system myself. Basically what it does, and again, this is specific to DAO House, but what it does is, is it allows for scalable DAO votes without needing, you know, so imagine like a, a DAO community of a thousand people, right? And quorum was 25%. Um, holographic voting would allow a proposal to pass with less than 250 people voting even though the quorum required for a regular vote was 25 percent so again there are other frameworks that provide these sort of mechanisms that help with like the long tail scaling issues of DAOs. what we're kind of doing right now is weighing these pros and cons like all right so there's this holographic voting it's very unique it's experimental to a certain extent it does that outweigh like the ease of use that aragon provides so Again, there are de definitely multiple DAO frameworks out there. Um, there are certain factors we use to pick Aragon, but I will also say like, again, Aragon might not be the ultimate solution we end up using. It has a lot of good functionality out of the box and it has a lot of things we need right now, but we are remaining open-minded. I think at this point, you know, what we need to do is just stay a little bit nimble. And that's why I would love to, you know, start getting folks involved in at least the generative art DAO right now, start using it, like does it feel good? Is anything coming up? Are there points of friction that we really don't see uh, as sustainable at scale, things like that. So this is, this is definitely still something we're experimenting on. We have a solid idea uh, and a path forward at the moment, but yeah, this is a journey we're all gonna be going on together. And I think, uh, I think there's some really cool solutions. Like, like we said, there's gonna be some challenging technical problems to solve, but uh, I'm excited to solve those, and I think the, what we come up with is going to be really beneficial. Yeah, so so what's funny is uh, a lot of these DAOs are basically that, like, uh, snapshot and Gnosis safe together, right? Like, so many of these tools right now that are coming out is just like, well, it's actually funny. Uh, a significant number of treasury management tools, Holly, are actually just like a UI built on top of the Gnosis safe UI. And, like, snapshot, you know, provides very similar functionality to this. So that's also something we can look at, too, is, like, what other tools exist out there do we do we need this framework right there's a snapshot and gnosis safe option also beneficial but yeah a lot of DAOs you'll notice like especially if you're familiar with snapshot and gnosis safe you'll notice that a lot of these DAO functionality seems familiar yeah actually i was talking to robin and i was asking if he had ever thought about whether like how to publish a data set or an algorithm through a DAO, and he said that he raised it in ocean DAO like six months ago or something he was saying it would be really cool if you could publish a data asset through gnosis safe so like you know yeah basically we want to build this feature on top of something the ability to publish data assets as a DAO, uh, and like that could be on top of gnosis safe it could be on top of aragon it could be on top of DAO house or like a moloch DAO. and so yeah i guess we're just in the exploration phase about like which one gives us most of what we need uh, and is most easy to adapt to what we want to add <laughs> Yeah, so right now we're, oh, sorry, that's my dog whining in the background uh, <laughs> as I'm driving. Um, you know, right now we're, let's see, with NFDAO, we've been using uh, DAO House for about uh, nine months or so, and it's on Polygon. And we've had a lot of problems with getting members, new members, because it's so expensive to move money uh, from Ethereum to Polygon, like $200 or something. So, uh, you know, as of yesterday's meeting, I think, you know, we already have a Gnosis save for most of our funds. And so I think that we're going to think, we're thinking about moving to NFT-based membership on Ethereum. Uh, to um, and then using a snapshot to do the voting. So it's basically like Gnosis safe plus a snapshot based on uh, NFT ownership. And the other thing that's interesting about Gnosis safe is you can build your own apps um, out there too. So if we wanted to um, build an app, a uh, safe app on top of Gnosis safe, we could do that too. So just a thought. Yeah, super interesting. Um, Holly, depending on what your schedule looks like over the next week or so, I'd love to maybe just meet up and, and chat in a little more detail about that. That sounds super interesting. Um, but yeah, I might, I might uh, shoot you a message if, uh, to see what your schedule looks like. But yeah, we'd definitely, definitely like to dig into that a little more as you have time. Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. Really appreciate it, Holly. Thank you so much. Um, 
yeah, because Zodiac is pretty cool. Like, I guess they're like apps on top of Gnosis as well, or maybe they're separate. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, with Zodiac, you you start off with a Gnosis safe, and then you can add these add-ons depending on what you need. So, for example, I think one of the add-ons is to execute a transaction automatically based on the outcome of a vote and like different features like this. So you kind of just take what you need and, and add it, which is a pretty cool idea. Yeah, so definitely a lot of area for flexibility here. And again, like the fact that a lot of these tools aren't built out in the way we need them, um, it, it is like a bit of a, a roadblock as we move forward. But again, it's also a really cool opportunity to try to uh, dedicate some resources to building something that is not only gonna be useful for us. Yeah, we kind, awesome. of, we kind of see one of our core products um, as like what we're calling like squads, basically. So like a squad is going to be a data science team. Uh, so the squad is the like DAO that we're, we're launching, basically. And so like what we think might be the case is that, you know, we have all of these general DAO frameworks, uh, but they're all, n none of them are made for data scientists, right? And so maybe the needs of data scientists from a DAO or data science teams are different to what all of these DAO frameworks are doing. And so maybe, uh, maybe Algovera will end up making its own DAO framework with maybe like a dashboard and maybe data scientists can log in and, you know, see all of the different uh, squads that they're a part of. And then maybe they can like click into these squads and, you know, vote on important decisions or like how to distribute funds for R and D on those projects. And so like, yeah, one of the products that we, we think we might have in the future is this like kind of DAO framework uh, made specifically for the requirements of data science teams. Yeah, absolutely. One of them, that's one of the reasons like I'm super excited to like learn from y'all and see like where, you know, as data scientists, where are the points of friction, right? Like what's not working, what can we build? So uh, yeah, lots of stuff to learn here, but seems like we're in a good spot as far as uh, making progress. Awesome. Uh, yeah, any other questions, feedback, thoughts about DAO frameworks, uh, anything along those lines? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't have anything about, uh, you are totally into it, and I think <laughs> you guys are, uh, you know, you're far ahead, so I have nothing to say. About, but uh, my question really is, what what's the next thing for the this group, right, or this uh, DAO? What's the next thing in terms of hacking or whatever? Uh, good question. Yeah, we're trying to, well, like, obviously we're coming up to the end of the year now. So um, we'll, I think everyone, like next week, I think is going to be, everyone's going to be winding down for the break. And so this will probably be the last one of this year, I would guess, even though we haven't discussed it yet. Um, so like what I'm going to do on Friday tomorrow is publish a blog post about our, what we're calling our create track. And so it's going to be a, a, uh, basic uh, grants program where we're going to give out $5,000, I think we said, um, based on uh, people submitting proposals. And so we have a discourse forum set up. So we're going to, you know, write this blog, ask everyone to submit proposals for data science projects that combine data science and Web3. And then we're going to distribute POAPs to everyone, like th the main members of our community. And then everyone with a POAP is going to get one vote uh, on on all of these project uh, submissions, and then we'll we'll fund those projects and like support them. Uh, and so, like maybe we'll even have hacking sessions for the different projects or something like that. So, for example, Rish, if you proposed a healthcare project and it was successful, maybe we could hold a healthcare hacking sessions next year or something like that. Um. So like that's, so I guess we're hoping that people propose their own projects. Um, I'm going to continue to work on the app uh, for generative art in parallel, um, just to go through the whole process of, because I don't think it's ever been done before, a web app with, a, with Ocean Market in the back end, um, and especially like where the app is generating value for a DAO of owners of an algorithm. So that, like, there's so much new stuff going on here that we don't know what problems we're going to run into. So I'm going to continue with that. I'm just, we're not sure it's the best thing to hack on. Um, like the, you know, working with the API frameworks and uh, 
like the continuous integration that Holly just linked to me and stuff. It's not as exciting to hack on, I guess, as like data science and, and stuff, not as visual. So we're going to continue that. Like if, if we figure out something on the app side that we think would be useful for a hacking session, maybe we can hold it here and there. But, but yeah, I guess we're hoping people can start their own projects or uh, join others' projects and things like that. Okay, cool. So keep an eye out for the blog tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, Richard, I would also like to have a little dive with you around like what kind of projects um, would fit into that. And of course, like Holly, I like, was also very interested in like any kind of climate science type projects as well. I think that would be great, yeah. Like we just set up the Climus channel yesterday. Uh, so yeah, I'd be really excited to explore that. Oh, right. I didn't mention um, Kaden, but like um, a project that I was working on as well. Um, some of them here knows this. Um, it, it also has a, some kind of prediction functionality um, and some tokenomics uh, around it. So um, you can check it out if you are interested. Yep. Yeah, so I'm talking with D-Climate right now, and they have some pretty amazing uh, data sets, uh, climate data sets. So that could be something, Vienna, if you'd be interested in hacking next uh, in January. On. Um, I'm also interested in this uh, uh, particular AI model called a reservoir um, computing model. I don't know if you've all heard of it, but it's a pretty interesting thing to uh, deal with um, highly complex uh, data sets. So um, yeah, anybody heard of a reservoir? They're good for chaos theory, like predicting chaotic models or something like that. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 so very, yeah, complexity. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Oh no, then no, Holly, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that would be really, I think it might be fun to see if we could get one of those going too. So I've never, I've never coded or, you know, worked or trained one, but it might be very interesting, so. Is that related to like cellular, cellular automata as well? Yeah, I think the way you would explain it is it's almost like um, instead of kind of, you know, as you as you come across into, you know, networks of cellular automata, it's actually like uh, like almost a random mess of, <laughs> of points within the network uh, where everything's kind of pointing uh, randomly. It's very it's a very strange model, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool when you can actually get it going. So. Cool. Um, can you say the name again, Holly? Reservoir, like just like uh, the water. R e. <laughs> See how can you spell it? R e s e. I, it's hard to spell when you're yeah. talking. R e s e r v o i r. Reservoir. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Richard. I got it rice as well. That's a tough one. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I, I'm curious because, you know, the next step for Project Kelvin is integrating like complex adaptive system. So I'm like, whoa, I never thought about, you know, using machine <laughs> learning for it yet. So we'll see. Great. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Richard. I remember reading some articles a while ago saying that deep learning was surprisingly good at predicting chaotic systems. Like it can predict way further into the future than like previous methods. So it's always been something I'm really interested to dive into and like what better than climate and weather, the most chaotic system of all of them. So it sounds amazing. Great. Oh, good job, um, Richard. <laughs> I feel like you have been just at this, uh, all these hacking sessions every week. Good job. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Like Thursdays are always like, you know, headphones on trying to get ready. So, um, yeah, like they've been great. I've really enjoyed them. And like the, the aim the whole time has been to just go through the whole process so that other people can, you know, use them as a reference for their own projects that they want to do. And so, um, hopefully like these different projects that people propose, you know, maybe, each of them will need to put a data set on the ocean marketplace or something like that. So, uh, so you can go to that video if, or, you know, if you want to figure out how to use the computer data, you can go to those YouTube videos. 
And so hopefully we have a reference for all of the different steps that people will need to take uh, with the projects. And if not, like we can just, you know, do another hacking session or the other thing we want to do is digest the material into, you know, if you have a, a certain problem, you don't want to watch a one hour long hacking video. So we're, we're hoping to start to, you know, document them like bullet points, the different steps and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, so people can use them as a reference. Cool. So yeah, like if, if anyone needs, once we put out the blog tomorrow, like maybe everyone can read us and then uh, we'll all take a break. And then like if we can give support to people like writing them or if anyone is wondering what a good project to propose would be, um, just, just to like start a, a conversation around all of these different projects, I think would be really exciting. Um, and to be honest, like we're really flexible. So we don't want to tell anyone what to work on. Uh, so it's yeah like everyone's ideas like we're really interesting to see them and uh yeah we don't want to tell people what to work on so whatever everyone is interested in is fantastic okay great yeah yeah i mean i'm, I'm definitely depending on algovera and you know all the sessions here so you know, once my project gets rolling, once I get uh, re start getting real data, uh, and then doing compute to data and all that, so I'm totally dependent on this. So, but uh, yeah, thinking of projects, um, I think. Uh, so my understanding then is that not every channel is a DAO by itself, right? Or is it going to be at some point? Um so not every project i think so what we were thinking of is like ocean ocean funds individuals individual teams and like in my experience working in ocean there's not that much like um conversation between all of the different teams that get funded and so that's something that we wanted to improve compared to what ocean did and so our idea at the moment is that each successful product project would have its own DAO. Um, and so like that could be a DAO or a squad with one person, like, but it just means that, um, to give an example, like, I think, uh, Jakob was talking about one stage of putting in a proposal for BCI data. So for brain computer interface data. And so he'd be the main person working on that. But what would be really cool would be if we could, uh, fund a squad and then that squad would also have like Sarah and Alexandra in the squad as advisors. So even if like all of the money, like the salary was going to Jakob for his development work, it would be great to have these squads where you could have, you know, advisors and, and things like that just to promote collaboration, I guess. Um, so that's like, that's my current thinking on us. Like I'm uh, definitely open to push back. Um, if people have, ways that they think we can improve it. But this, this was our idea for improving it compared to Ocean, um, to set up these squads um, and fund these squads. And then maybe squads will start to interact with different squads and all this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to figure it out as we go, basically. Yeah, okay. So. Um... Yeah, I guess it's early days and uh, things will get clear as they go on. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of people interacting with each other rather than, uh, you know, separate, just kind of, uh, so like Ocean has so many projects and you don't know anything about them. So, you know, for example, I didn't know about, you know, several projects and I think Pearl brings a little bit more, uh, you know, ease of uh, looking at older projects. But yeah, I mean, I really like this idea where you have people interacting with one another. Uh, more frequently it's very nice great yeah and you can kind of think of it like project tokens so it's just like having different tokens for different projects and then you know that hopefully that means that having these project tokens it can help projects to fund themselves you know so like maybe the algavera grants gives some funds to get it started but then at another point maybe 
other investors, they like the project so much that they start buying the project tokens and then that becomes a source of funding for the project uh, separate to Algovera. Um, so yeah, like that's kind of how we see Algovera in future is this like a DAO of DAOs and where each DAO is like a project and you know, you can log into your project dashboard and see how all the projects are doing. And um, so that's obviously a lot of work still to do, but that's, uh, that's the dream, I suppose. We're steadily marching towards it, so. <laughs> it's just gonna, it's gonna be so exciting. Like, can you imagine in like January or February next year where we have, you know, a climate, a climate DAO and a, a brain computer interface DAO and some other really interesting subjects that like, there's gonna be so much going on to keep up with. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, so I think even though Killian is joining now, I think that's, we're just coming up to time. Hey, Killian. Hey, um, hey. sorry, my time zones are mixed up. I'm, uh, <laughs> I know I'm a little bit late, but I don't know how, how late. <laughs> uh, we're, we were just finishing up. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, damn it. Okay. okay. But we recorded, so in case you're interested oh, in cool. watching it back. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, sweet. It's nice to meet you anyway for the first time. I think this is the first yeah. call you've been on. Yes, it is. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. Um, yeah, I'm away at the moment, so I'm, I'm time zone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, good to meet um, you. I'll catch up. Yeah, you too. We'll have many more, so you're very welcome to join them. Cool. Thanks. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll wrap it up there, everyone, and uh, keep in touch on Discord and uh, like, yeah, just keep up, keep in touch. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Have a great, great holiday. So. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Kit, and very informative. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, thanks. Bye. Bye.